This is Sneaker Gears, my name is Levi, and welcome to another Running Gears episode, where today I'm going to talk about the forgotten Max Cushion Daily Trainer that is kind of mixed into the entire New Balance lineup. And that's the Fresh Foam More. If this is your first time joining the channel, thank you. Please consider subscribing at the end of the video if you like it. Give it a thumbs up. Now, I will have some links in the description below if you did want to pick any of these shoes up. But as the video states, the Fresh Foam More. This is a shoe that I have seen very little reviews on, and I actually picked it up on accident just because I got a great deal on it. And I was shocked how good it was and how much of improvement it was over the version one. But in New Balance's lineup, they have a whole slew of everyday trainers you can get. I think the most prolific one would be, forgive me here, is the 1080. This is their high cushion, not max cushion, daily trainer. This has a ton of rubber on the outsole, this is something that can last you miles. The upper, the knit on this is unbelievable. So the, the comfort of just the fit is fantastic. And the new Fresh Foam X they're using on this model versus last year is giving you about 20% more cushion. So it's still something that is not very plush. I don't know why a lot of say, oh, it's super soft. No, it. Uh, depending how small you are, uh, and forgive me, I'm more of a linebacker built at 240 plus pounds, then absolutely, this is something, uh, if you're 150 pounds, it's gonna feel a lot softer. Uh, but this is something that is has a nice rocker shape. It's still flexible enough. Uh, the shape conforms uh, of the upper to a variety of foot types. So this is something that just a lot of people can really enjoy. But in the same lineup of New Balance, all those good things I said about this, and that doesn't make it a perfect shoe. It's it's not as bouncy as maybe people would like as far as energy return. It's not as soft as maybe some folks would like, say if you're coming from a Hoka Clifton. Uh, it's not as, uh, I guess, quick or fast running as some other shoes you can get that have a little more pop to it. So there's a lot of things it's not, but very New Balance. It's kind of vanilla right in the middle where it does a ton of things well. So, where does that leave the Fresh Foam More? All right, so the Fresh Foam More is just that. I would say this has probably about 25% more cushion. So this is something that it feels a little bit softer, has slightly more uh, of an energy return, a little bounce to it, but I think what it does the most is really alleviate any kind of ground feel. And there's a lot of runners that do like that ground feel and that contact, but if you don't, which is someone like myself, the shoe is fantastic. Now, a very similar shoe to this, ironically, is the Fresh Foam Beacon. Now, this is the version one. I tried the two, I preferred the upper on the one, and the three, based on all reviews, has been absolutely fantastic, but also, they say it feels very similar to the one and the two, which is still a great thing. This, I find softer than what you're finding in the 10A, 1080. I think it has a little bit more bounce to it, and it's just super lightweight. Now, I do have my scale here, so let's take a look here. This is a 12 wide, I believe. No, forgive me, this is a 12 and a half. This is an 11 and a half wide, and they both fit me fantastic. So the size 12 in the Beacon, let's take a look here, is 8.9 ounces. For an everyday trainer, it's fantastic. So now we have something that has a quite a bit better locked in feel. I imagine similar to what you're getting from the Beacon 3, has less ground feel, which I appreciate, maybe you don't, but is gonna give you maybe something not as soft, but definitely a little bit more bouncy. So let's throw that on there. All right, and we're at 11.4 ounces. So definitely a step up, all right? We're looking at about 2.5 ounces of difference, and I can feel it here. But again, this is a shoe that is stacking up with something like a Bondi, and it's almost two ounces lighter than that while giving you that max cushion effort. Now, if we take a look and weigh the 1080, and that is a 12 wide, so we have a whole gambit here of 12 and a half, 12 wide, and 11 and a half wide. The 1080 is coming in at 11.7. So the 1080 is actually a heavier shoe and it definitely feels like it. So it's one of these, having owned all of them, 
I'm kind of leaning towards a fresh foam more is one I just really appreciate where it has the weight. It has kind of that arced or curved outsole. It's still flexible enough. Now it has a little bit more cushion than the rest of these. Now, again, I, I love the Beacon. This is one of those, if I don't know anybody, I don't know where you're at and how you're running, how fast you are, where if you're a beginner, you're an, someone who has been running a long time, this is something I could easily recommend to anybody. But at the end of the day, it's not as supportive as this is gonna be. This has a wider base, has a little bit more locked in feel, and this is gonna give you a little bit more natural support. So if you need a little bit more support, or maybe if you're a beginner and you just wanna have some support as you learn how to run, you learn your gait and you learn how your foot strikes, that might be a better option. Now, I was able to get mine very cheap. The Fresh Foam War 2 is available generally on sale. I've seen it as low as like $90, even though it retails for $165. So when you have the Beacon, I believe that's $120, and it's a little bit harder to find on sale unless you're getting the older generation, they're actually very comparative. So if you want something a little bit lighter, go with the Beacon if you know you don't need support. But if you're looking for that max cushion, that Fresh Foam War is absolutely fantastic. Now I do wanna throw one more shoe in here. Now I said New Balance had a lot of daily trainers. One I don't have and I'm not planning on getting is their 880, uh, I don't know if it is version nine or whatever that is. That is more of their uh, moderate cushion, a little more stable daily runner. I don't really need stability and I prefer more cushion. So that's something I had no interest in trying, but if you do need a little bit more support and or you don't want as much cushion, then maybe that's an option you wanna check out. But this guy, the Fuel Cell TC, now this is their training version of their race shoe. This has a ton of rubber on the outside, so this is absolutely something that's meant to be used for a lot of miles and you can use for daily training. This has a carbon fiber plate, a completely different cushion setup that is much softer, much bouncier, but we're going from 120 in the Beacon 3 to 165 on the Fresh Foam More to $200. And as much as I love this shoe, I love the fit. This is a straight size 12, not a 12 wide, and it fits me unbelievable. It has a nice pop to it. It is softer, it is bouncier. Uh, is it the better shoe? In general, it is the better shoe, but for just logging uh, slower miles and really getting those miles on your feet, uh, which is what I've been doing lately where I'm not really looking at my speed. I, I just wanna spend more time in the road, uh, get my ligaments and my tendons, my, my body used to those miles. I prefer this. Now, as you're picking up the pace, this thing is so much fun, but as you slow down, it's just not quite there. And that's simply because that fresh foam does start to bottom out just a little bit. So you have more ground feel. Now, again, when you're running fast, I do appreciate that. And that carbon fiber plate does need a little bit more speed to really activate, even though that doesn't mean you have to be going all out effort in this. So I really like this one, but at the same time, I think this is gonna find a home for a lot more people being on sale. The fact that it's still relatively lightweight and it has something that I think more people can enjoy. I was just really surprised. Let's take a little look at the weight on this thing though. Surprisingly, this comes in at 11 ounces. So this is a size 12, so we have 11, 11.4, and 11.7 on the 1080. So this is something that is kind of heavy for being a carbon fiber training shoe that's supposed to be lightweight, but in regards, it's still relatively lightweight, but that's what makes this such a great training shoe because when you do put a shoe on, it is eight ounces or seven ounces goodness uh, a treyu which i have a video on they have one that's six ounces you feel like you're flying as you trade shoes from something a little bit heavier to lighter like it's taking ankle weights off so this is still a fantastic trainer but by and large i'm glad i got the fresh foam too if you're looking for a max cushion everyday trainer you can go out there you don't want ground contact or ground feel. You're looking for something with a little bit more secured fit with just a little bit of stability. Uh, I think this just hits the, the point home for a lot of runners that can really enjoy it. If you're a bigger athlete, if you're just starting to run, if you're feeling pain in your, your knee or back from the shoes you're having, uh, maybe getting something like this is actually gonna help you so you can enjoy your run and go out more often. Because at the end of the day, it's 
really one, don't get injured, two, enjoy the run, and three, just logging more miles. You're gonna get faster, you're gonna get in better shape, and I think this is a really nice tool to have in your closet that you can enjoy and use when you need it. If this video helped you out in any way, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I will try to help as much as possible. If you guys want to see any other comparisons, let me know what will help you. And I'm happy to put in the work and really help as many athletes as possible. As always, I really appreciate you guys. This is Levi with Sneaky Gears, and I'll come at you later.